In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a motorcycle jump projectile problem. The first scenario we're going to look at is we're going to see if this motorcycle rider can clear this 60 meter gap going off this ramp that is 60 degrees above the horizontal of this platform going a speed of 25 meters per second. And then also we're going to do a second problem where this second landing platform is a little bit lower. That's going to be 10 meters lower than the platform that they take off of. So let's go ahead and get this first one started up. We're going to go ahead and start off with our X and Y column. And you always want to do that and make sure all of your values are organized into a horizontal and a vertical column so that your variables don't get mixed up and you also use the correct formulas. Now, we're going to go ahead and take this um, 25 degrees and make a little triangle, excuse me, 25 meters per second, and make a triangle with it. We're going to have an X component, and then we're also going to have a Y component as well. So we go ahead and do a little bit of trig. So we're going to take the side opposite of the 60 degree angle in combination of the hypotenuse of 25 meters per second to find the Y component. And then when we take... 25 times the sine of 60 degrees, we're going to get 21.65 meters per second. And then that's going to go into our Y column, 21.65. That's going to be our initial velocity in the vertical direction. Now in the horizontal direction, we want the adjacent side to the 60 degree angle along with the hypotenuse as well. So this one is going to look sort of similar, 25, except we're going to use cosine of 60 degrees. And that's going to give us 12.5 meters per second. So we have less velocity directed in the horizontal direction because 60 degrees is a little bit more vertical than it is horizontal. It's 15 degrees above 45, which would be dead in the center. So we have a velocity on this side of 12.5. Okay. On the left side, we don't distinguish if it's an initial velocity because the horizontal motion is constant. So this is a constant horizontal velocity of 12.5 meters per second. Now for this problem, we're going to fill out some more stuff in our Y column. Our acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then also, if they're returning back to the same level that they took off from, the final vertical velocity is going to be the same as the initial, but downwards. So it's negative 21.65 meters per second. Now from there, we actually have all the information we need. We're going to go ahead and use this formula right over here to help us find our time. And then once we find our time, we can slide it over to this X column to help us find the range. So let's go ahead and calculate that out. Okay, so what's gonna happen is um, we're gonna plug in all of our numbers into that formula that I mentioned earlier. We get a time of 4.42 seconds after we cross multiply the acceleration and the time. And then the 4.42 seconds is the one number that can be placed into either column because it's not a vector and does not have a direction. So we slid the time right over here in the green. And then we can only use this formula when calculating anything in the X direction because that's a constant velocity formula. So if we rearrange it, it's delta x equals v times t. So we took our v of 12.5 that we got from our original triangle times that t that we just got from the y side, the 4.42, multiply the two, and then we got a delta x of 55.25 meters. So will the 
Um, motorcyclists make it across? The answer is no, because the gap is 60 meters. Obviously, 55.25 meters is going to be a little bit short. Okay, so for our second scenario, it is going to be slightly different. It's going to look like this. So our new scenario, we have the biker still taking off at 25 meters per second, still taking off at that 60 degree angle, and they are 100 meters off the ground, and they're going to land on this platform that's 90 meters off the ground and still 60 meters spanning that gap right there, which is a delta X that we want to see if we can um, exceed that to land on the second platform. So what I did is I left a few of the numbers that still apply to our second scenario. The initial velocity in the y direction and that constant horizontal velocity are the same because the 25 meters per second and the 60 degrees remained constant in this next scenario and the acceleration due to gravity is still negative 9.8. Now the thing that we want to add in this one is we went from a 100 meter platform to a 90 degree one which means that our delta y is going to be negative 10 meters because we're being displaced 10 meters from our original position from 100 to 90. Now in this case we're going to actually want to use this formula right over here and um, we're going to plug in delta y as negative 10 we have 21.65 times t plus one half a t squared so what we're going to do is do a little bit of rearranging for this one um, we can go ahead and set everything equal to zero just by adding the 10 to both sides. And I'm gonna combine these two and make that negative 4.9 to give it a new coefficient, negative 4.9 times T squared plus 21.65 T plus the 10 meters that we just added to both sides. Now everything is all set equal to zero, so you can use the quadratic formula or you can go ahead and graph it and see the two intersection points where the line crosses the x-axis. In that case, you're gonna get a couple different times and the one you're gonna keep is the positive time that is 4.84 seconds. Okay, now again, we can go ahead and slide that time over here because time is going to be the only one that we can translate to the other side and do what we did last time, which was take the velocity times the time, multiply the two, and then this time the delta x comes out to 60.5. Now this, this time they do actually exceed this 60 meter gap. Our delta X is gonna be a little bit greater. So this one, they do land it, they do make it across. Um, the difference in this one was we have to solve for time a little bit differently and use this equation, which causes a quadratic or something that you have to graph to find this different time. The time is a little bit longer because the biker does drop that additional 10 meters. So giving it that extra hang time makes a greater delta x so in this one they do make it so i hope that was helpful to you thank you for watching and listening mm -hmm.